And I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged, I have to be honest. Because I think my side was rigged. Sometimes folks, if they lose, they start complaining that they got cheated. Uh, but I've never heard of somebody complaining about being cheated before the game was over. President Obama responding Thursday to Donald Trump's claim that the election could be rigged. While dismissing Trump's concerns, the president did say the federal government is ready to help local election officials if it turns out their voting machines are vulnerable to hackers. With recent hacks of the Democratic Party, there are worries that a cyber attack could influence voting results in November. Those fears were heightened by a report from the Brennan Center for Justice. It shows significant hacking vulnerabilities for computerized voting machines with little being done about it. Joining us with more on that is Dan Ackerman, senior editor at CNET. Dan, good morning. Hey. It certainly feels like this is the year of the hack. It does. You could almost call this the year of the hack, but it's part of a longer trend line that goes back a yep. few years. And what we've seen especially is that government data and political data, whether it's the OPM data breach or the DNC emails, uh, it, it's a valuable target. So obviously the next step is the big prize would be you know, an election, especially when people start using words like rig and throwing that around. U.S. elections are, are locally run, thousands of different systems, varying degrees of security. Is that a good thing or a bad thing that it's split up like that? Yeah, the way we run elections here, it, it's very much on the local level. So every state and even cities within the state, they can have different types of electronic voting machines from different manufacturers running different software, different operating systems, updated and patched differently. Uh, if you ask any IT guy about that, he, they're going to say it's a nightmare. Yeah. Some of the key battleground states, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, seems like they have updated their software. But what is the game plan? I mean, why are we not updating all of this software around the nation to ensure this doesn't happen? Right, because we don't have a uniform sort of national code of what election, uh, of what voting machines need to have, what they need to look like. It's really up to every state individually. Now, some of the best case scenarios are machines where they record the vote electronically, but they also simultaneously create a paper record. Right. And you yeah. actually see that at the same time. So then you could take any individual machine or group of machines and audit the results and right. check the paper, check the results. But that's not every electronic vote voting machine and obviously not every voting machine is an electronic one you know right now how easy is it to hack an electronic voting machine theoretically yeah you, know, you could say that there's no system anywhere that's not hackable in mm -hmm. you know in some form go back you know decades and people used to say there was no such thing as a, as a bank vault that a criminal could not get into with enough time and enough resources you could say the same thing here uh, but the fact that you have this sort of uh, a quilt pattern of different machines and different software and some of them are updated some of them are old some of them are new you yeah. know, creates a lot of Vulnerabilities. There's such an interesting irony in thinking that the paper and the pencil might be the most effective way to do it. But on the other hand, if we are going to go electronic, is there ever going to be a way to really say to people there's no way this could have been hacked? Yeah, I think you can never tell anybody that something is totally 100% secure, but you can follow best practices. A lot of what we're talking about with having the simultaneous paper record and if anyone had the same types of machines, it reminds me a lot of companies that make connected cars, connected home stuff. They've all had data breaches and hacking because these are companies that do other things, but they're not primarily security companies. In 2016, every company has to be a security company, and that includes the guys who make voting machines. Right. We, we saw a graphic there a second ago that, that uh, there are some countries like Belgium, Brazil, and in Venezuela that that uh, that are all electronic, but there's still most countries actually still use a paper and pencil. Sure, and a lot of these are also much smaller, uh, you know, countries, and they probably have a uniform machine across, you know, the entire country. Whereas here again, we have this patchwork system where kind of the lowest bidder in a lot of cases makes the voting machines. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too because I think there's like a psychological component to say even if it hasn't happened, it could happen. Oh, and that especially when yeah. you start muddying the waters, you don't have to do anything. You just have to create the impression that you right. could get in there yeah. um, and and leave a mark, and that just makes people feel less secure about the technology they're using to cast their votes. And the results. Dan, thank you as always. Thank you.